This is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. I have another exciting episode for you. And I'm standing here in front of my super huge monster trellis in front of my cacai pumpkin bed with a whole bunch of cacai pumpkins and also some other zucchini uh, squashes planted in there. What we're going to do today is we're going to have a fun episode on how to increase your yields with the cacai pumpkins, other pumpkins, other squashes, whether they're zucchini squash or winter squashes by uh, doing some pollination. We're literally gonna learn about the birds and the bees for the squash plants here. Now, remember back to junior high or high school, you may have had a sex ed class, I know I did. We learned about reproduction of a people, <laughs> but we didn't learn about botany or how plants reproduce. Well, most of us anyways, unless you're a plant geek. Now, I never went to you know a botany class or never majored in biology. I don't have any degree in horticulture, but you know, today I'm gonna show you how easy it is to learn about the birds and the bees and about pumpkin reproduction very simply and very easily. So first let's go ahead and show you some different flowers and explain to you uh, what they are, how they work and how to pollinate and how to increase your yields. First thing we need to do is figure out what a male and a female flower looks like. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is a male flower. I am a male and this is the male flower. It's very easy to distinguish. Uh, you know, number one, what you're going to notice is you're going to notice on the stem the stem comes straight up, as you can see right here, straight up, and there's no engorged part. You know, if there's an engorged part or enlargement on the stem, then it's a female. That's one easy way to determine. The other way, which is actually even easier, is uh, look into the middle of the flower. As you can see, we can see the middle of the flower, and what you're going to want to look for is a little piece that comes up right in the center. We're going to carefully uh, tear this uh, apart for you guys. You guys can see inside the middle. And what we're wanting to look at is just that little thing sticking out right there. Now, you know, if that thing right there looks like your thing, and what we're talking about is this thing right here, if that thing looks like your thing, so you could check your thing, I'm checking my thing, okay, my thing looks like that thing, then it's a male. Well, that's if you're a male. If you're a female and it looks like your thing, then it's a female. So this is a male flower because it looked like my thing right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, I, as you can see, I cut off the leaf here. And we have the little uh, my thing, <laughs> or the male flower right here. And oh, and many people just discard these. What I want to recommend for you guys is actually as you pull them off, eat it. Mmm. Man, the flower is really rich in antioxidants. Really excellent flavor. I love it. Anyways, now we're going to take the uh, plant thing and pollinate some other plant things. Now I got a male by the stem. Is that like a bull by the horns? Uh, we could take our male and now impregnate or uh, pollinate some females. Now, fortunately for the plant, there's actually a lot more males than females, so you might have a hard time finding a female, and I have that problem in personal life. But uh, nonetheless, it looks like we found a female right here. So let's go ahead and give you guys a close-up on the female and how it looks. Now we're going to show you guys a female flower, and uh, let me go ahead and open her up so you can see in the middle. <laughs> So besides uh, showing you guys the inside of the flower, what I want to show you guys is actually the base of the female flower. As you remember, this is our male here. It has the flower and uh, the, just the stem. But if we look on the back of the female here, you can see right in here, it has the stem coming out. But then there's an engorged area or an enlarged area, much like a pregnant lady. Uh, but actually, this is actually the small fruit forming. Now, what we want to do is we want to impregnate or pollinate the female flower. So let's go ahead and move this guy back over and show you guys. So in the middle of the female flower, you know, it looks like a female people reproductive parts. It kind of just has like a whole bunch of different things and it doesn't look like a male by any means or any long shot. Many people may use a paintbrush and get some pollen off the male or, you know, a Q-tip or a pencil eraser and get some pollen off the male. I prefer just to use the, the real deal, you know, why, you know, pleasure the plant with something uh, <laughs> fake when you could use the real thing. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to take the male here, spread the female petals open wide, and uh, we're just going to carefully take this guy and just brush around the edge very carefully of the female. Now, you don't want to necessarily like jam it down the middle like we, we would. Wait, relax, don't do it when you want to go to it. <laughs> what you want to do is gently take the male and just, uh, you know, uh, brush it gently, caress gently the uh, female around the edges to get some uh, pollen in there and you know let nature do the rest just like a praying mantis after you're uh, you know have pollinated a few females with one male mmm eat it <laughs> wow actually that tasted quite good so that's really how easy it is to pollinate your flowers 
your squash flowers, you know, by pollinating, you're basically going to ensure that you're going to uh, have fruit created. Now, do we need to pollinate? Well, you know, if you have bees and other insects in your area, then you shouldn't even have to worry about pollination. If you are using something like row covers to exclude the bad bugs, um, then you, you will probably actually want to pollinate to ensure you get good yields. It doesn't take a lot to pollinate, and actually it's a quite uh, fun and rewarding experience, plus also very tasty too, because after you're done pollinating, don't forget to eat them. Mm. I love eating my squash flowers. I think I mostly like the females <laughs> when they turn into fruit and not the males, but males are delicious nonetheless. To sum it up, it's really easy to pollinate the uh, squashes. All you got to do is, uh, you know, look at the plant parts, check your parts. If they're the same, then it's the same gender as yourself. And then uh, pick the males and uh, pollinate the females and call it a done day. Enjoy some flowers in the process. In the end, I want to remind you guys to ensure nice large fruit and I, I like nice large fruit you want to ensure you pollinate your squash plants now the last thing I want to mention is that if you do want to harvest your squash blossoms such as this guy right here uh, you know they make fabulous decorations for a nice pretty girl's ear or maybe even a pretty guy's uh, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to harvest the males there's far many and more males than females and uh, harvest the extra males after you have pollinated all the females and then actually you could use these, and I actually like to use these uh, fresh on salads. They make the salads look great. You could also uh, tear the petals up and, you know, put them on the top of your salad. You could use the petals like actually uh, leafy greens. They're actually very high in uh, beta carotene and other phytonutrients that are quite essential for us. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode about plant reproduction. You know, I knew I went to high school for something, and I don't think this was it. But anyways, it's uh, really easy to pollinate your squashes. Once again, remember the birds and the bees. If you don't got the bees, you got to hand pollinate. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time and keep on growing.